everyone. Um, so we're just gonna get started in a few minutes. I wanna give everyone a minute or two to log in. We'll start right at the top of the hour. Um, but before we get started, I just want to confirm that everybody can hear me and see my screen. I'm just gonna flip through the first couple of slides. Um, and if you can just uh, let me know that you can see me and uh, or you can see the screen and you can hear me by typing yes into the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel, that would be a huge help. All right, thank you guys so much. Um, I'm just gonna put myself on mute for another second or so, and we'll get started right at the top of the hour. All right, well, hello everyone and welcome to our first webinar for Give 828 this year. Um, we're gonna be talking about getting started with this event um, and uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Linda Gerhardt and I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause. Um, and I was on the happy hour uh, that YBGB hosted if you were present there. So hello again if I met you during the happy hour. Um, we are the platform partner for Give 828 and I helped uh, with the transition to the platform last year for Giving Black Day. And I'm really happy to be managing the technology side of Give 20, 828 again this year. Um, part of my role here is nonprofit education here at Mighty Cause. I manage our blog and host monthly webinars to help nonprofit professionals fundraise better and smarter and leverage the Mighty Cause platform to further their causes. And I also manage giving days like Give 828. Um, I've been helping to run giving days with foundations all over the country for the past four years. So I'm bringing that experience uh, to get you all oriented with the Mighty Cause platform and ready for Give 828. Um, Ebony um, is unfortunately not able to make it today um, because she is taking some well-deserved time off. So it's just me for this webinar. And here's a quick look at today's agenda. Um, we'll try to keep things short and sweet and apologies in advance that some of this webinar is a little bit more on the technical side, but we'll do our best to keep it interesting. Um, just as a bit of housekeeping, we are recording this webinar and you'll have access to it along with the slides on the Give 828 website under trainings. Um, and just to keep things running smoothly, we'll do the Q&A at the end of the webinar. So if you think of a question you wanna ask while I'm presenting, just type that into the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel, and I'll make sure that we have time for it at the end of the presentation. All right, so I just wanted to start off with some giving day basics for you. Uh, some of this may be review for those uh, who attended the happy hour, but I wanted to start off with some basics about this particular event, Give 828. Um, the site is, of course, at give828.org, and this event is hosted by Young Black and Giving Back Institute on the 28th of August as a culmination of Black Philanthropy Month. Um, there's some really great context on the Give 828 website um, and in the nonprofit toolkit that the YBGB put together about the significance of the day that they've chosen for this event, um, which I highly recommend checking out if you haven't already. Um, this event was previously known as Giving Black Day. So this is the first year as Give 828, but it's actually the third year for this event. Um, and this event begins at 8 a.m. and goes to 11 p.m. on the 28th. A lot of giving events start at midnight, so this is a much more humane schedule. <laughs> you don't have to stay up late to manage your event. Um, so it's 15 hours of charitable giving and fundraising, and you'll actually have a chance to kickstart your campaign with an early giving period that begins on August 14th, um, which is a little less than a month from now, and we'll talk more about the early giving period later on in this webinar. Um, one thing I did want to note is that even if you've participated in the past, we do ask that you register uh, for the event each year, which is for a couple of reasons. Um, in many cases, we need some information from you in order to determine whether you're eligible for 
for certain prizes. Um, you'll notice there's some localized questions about where you're, you're located and what communities you serve in the registration form this year and that's all related to sponsorships and prizes um, and we also just want to get affirmative consent that you're planning on participating in this event um, and that we have accurate and up-to-date information on your organization um, and yet just to confirm yes there will be prizes um, ebony and the team at ybgb is working hard to finalize those so stay tuned for announcements related to the prizes that will be available this year once they are announced you'll be able to find them on the give 828 site as well um, so before we press on, I did want to take a step back and talk a little bit about what giving events and giving days like Give 828 are all about. Um, a giving day is a single day of supercharged philanthropy that aims to bring together nonprofits, donors, and communi communities around a single cause for a single day. Um, there's a host, which in this case, of course, is Young Black and Giving Back Institute, and they do most of the work to organize, liaise with nonprofits, work with sponsors, and publicize the event. Um, it's sort of their brainchild. Um, the host partners with a platform, which in this case is Mighty Cause, which handles the technology side of the event. Um, we build the site, and we also make sure that our technology is able to handle the increased capacity that these days bring. We have a lot of people People making a lot of donations um, and our platform is specially built and scalable so that we can accommodate that extra traffic so that there's no slowdown in making donations um, so that there's no lags there's everything's processing smoothly and donors have a really great experience giving on the giving day um, now one thing I did want to talk about a bit is why YBGB chose to move to a platform in the first year of giving black day they did not have a platform partner they had participants report their fund raising results to them. Um, there are a couple benefits to having a platform partner and chief among them is organization uh, for the event itself. We provide a leaderboard to provide some friendly competition and we have prize structures built in so that there's some incentives there for um, nonprofits to fundraise that the, the, host, the host organization does not have to manually manage themselves. Um, we also provide comprehensive reporting on the day, to the day's organizers as well as nonprofits Profit so that they can manage the event's growth, see donation activity, and you get the full report on everybody that gave to you all in one place. Um, and they really wanted to help set up nonprofits that participate with a platform that can help you fundraise in the future, which is what Mighty Cause can do. Um, I know that many of you have a platform that you use for your other your day to day fundraising. Um, but for those that are still using a PayPal button or doing most of your fundraising on Facebook or managing donors and spreadsheets, Mighty Cause is a step up and this giving day gets you in the door and gets you oriented with the platform so that you can do more with your fundraising and bring in sustainable revenue and help your nonprofit grow. Um, that was one of the goals of the event was not just to bring you together for a single day to provide you with tools and resources and a platform that can empower you year round. So how do giving days work? Um, basically, it's very simple. You're competing with other nonprofits to win prizes, which can be done through leaderboard position or through hourly prizes throughout the day. And again, a lot of this will make much more sense when the prizes are announced. You'll be able to see what prizes are available and sort of strategize around how to win those prizes. Um, but beyond the prize money, it's also about raising awareness. Um, Give 828 uh, aims to shine a spotlight on Black-led organizations and emphasize the importance of black leadership and all the work you are doing. And as everybody on this webinar knows, this is a message that the public needs to hear in addition to hearing about the great work that your organization itself is doing in your communities. Um, during a giving day, it's really all about strength in numbers and collective impact. Um, in addition to what you raise on your own, there's something really powerful about saying together, all of these Black-led organizations raised more than $30,000 in a single day, which is what participants did last year. Um, and finally, a giving event like Give 828 is a perfect icebreaker for reaching out to sponsors, community partners, asking your supporters to donate and fundraise for you. It's a perfect marketing tool above all else. Um, People get what giving days are and they are usually really excited and happy to step up and support you during a giving day. 
Um, so here's what you need to do to participate. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you just need to register, which you can do at give828.org, and create and customize your profile on Mighty Cause. Um, now, if you participated last year, you'll actually be using the same profile. You don't have to create one year after year, um, but you can just update it for 2020 and remove any outdated info, really simple. Um, and you'll need to plan a fundraising campaign and promote it on your social media channels, in emails, and so on. You just want to send your supporters to the correct place to make a donation to show their support for your, your work. Um, and this is optional but recommended. We'll talk a little bit more about this, but we, you can also incorporate peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, which is asking your supporters to fundraise on your behalf. Um, and we're going to get a little bit more into that a bit further on in the webinar. And finally, you just need to raise money for your cause. Um, so you would be doing that anyway at a nonprofit. Um, this is just asking you to concentrate some of your fundraising efforts on August 28th for this giving event. So simply you just need to register, uh, create your profile or customize your profile, plan a campaign and raise money. It's not very complicated and we try to make it as easy as possible for you. Okay, so now we're going to move on to some of the more technical stuff, um, but we're going to talk through the steps that we recommend taking to get familiar with Mighty Cause and get your profile ready for August 28th. Um, again, we've already talked about registration, but um, you do need to register. There's just a short form to fill out and submit to start the process of participating in Give 8 to 28. And I know that a lot of you who are on this webinar have already done this. Um, approval is handled by YBGB, um, and they are taking their time to ensure that every organization that participates meets their criteria, which is that their staff, leadership, and board are at least 50% black, um, because the goal of the event is to empower and shine a spotlight on black led nonprofits. Um, so that's the most common reason that nonprofits are getting declined from registering. And they're also being very careful to make sure that they are getting the right organizations approved for the event. Um, once you're approved, you'll get an email notification letting you know um, that has some next steps. And uh, once you're approved, you'll also be granted access to your nonprofit profile. And you can add other people at your organization who will be helping with your campaign so that they can have access to the back end of your page like you do. So you as the the person who's registering will be given access and then at a later time once you're approved you can add people to your page if they need to access it. Um, once you're registered and have access to your profile, you'll have a dashboard on the Give 828 site, which you can use to manage your nonprofit um, and your profile. The, the menu is organizing carrots, which are the little drop down arrows um, that you can expand and collapse to access features and to navigate. Um, going down the dashboard from the top, there's first an overview page that you can access, which gives you some quick stats on your fundraising activity and also contains your to do list, um, which we'll talk about in just a second. Uh, below that is fundraising, which you can, which if you expand that section, has all the tools you'll need to build your campaign. Um, you can edit your profile, customize your checkout flow, manage your campaigns. Um, this is basically the hub of all of your fundraising activity, um, which is really easy to find. You just go to fundraising and you click on the little the carrot or the little arrow to expand it to get to specific tools. Um, and then you have reports, um, which we're going to talk about, um, but you can expand to find your donation report, your donor retention report, and pretty much everything that you would need to um, access in terms of reporting. Um, and lastly, at the bottom of your menu, you have settings, which is where you can manage your organization's legal information, add more administrators to your profile, set up EFT, which is our direct deposit option for uh, disbursements, and manage your disbursements. Um, so really the first actual step once you've registered and you've gotten to see what your dashboard looks like is starting to customize your profile. Um, your organization page or your profile is basically the face of your organization during Give 828. So it's worth taking some time to show it some love and make sure it represents your organization as well as possible. Um, you can customize the look and feel to match your organization's branding and to tell your organization's story, which we're going to talk about in just a second. Um, on your overview page, there is a quick to-do list um, that you can use to be your guide, especially if you're setting up your page for the first time. It's just five things, but these are the five most important things you can do on your profile, even if you do literally nothing else with your profile. Um, you can click on the link in the to-do list um, and it'll, be it'll take you right to that section where you can complete that task. 
um, and you'll see a check mark next to that item when it's complete. So this is a really easy guide um, to getting your profile in good shape for Give 828. Um, and if you went through your to-do list last year for Giving Black Day, you have a head start. You've already done most of the, these things and you can always check in and see if there's something that you missed in 2019. Um, editing your theme doesn't take long and it goes a long way toward making the page feel like your own page. Um, the first thing you should do is upload a logo. Um, your logo does need to be a one-to-one -one aspect ratio, which is basically a convoluted way of saying it needs to be a square. Um, your logo is going to show in searches on the leaderboard and it will represent you all over the Give828 site. Um, so it's one of the most important pieces to upload to your profile. Um, sometimes if you have a landscape logo that's wider than it is tall, you might need some help getting it formatted correctly to fit in that image container because, um, you know, on the search and in the leaderboard, you have to fit within a, a, a predetermined space, a little image container. Um, so you can always reach out to our support staff, um, support at mightycause.com if you're struggling to get your logo to fit in. And I also recommend checking out um, free photo editors like Canva. Um, that's my favorite free photo editor and you can easily play around with your logo and make sure that it fits within that space. Um, you can add some additional customization to your page with a banner image, which works best when there's no text on it, which this is not a great example of on this slide as I'm looking at it. Um, and the reason that text uh, can be an issue is because our site is mobile responsive, which means that um, when you're looking at it on your phone, our site says, oh, okay, you're on a phone and it adjusts so that it looks good on your phone. And it, it knows if you're looking at it from a tablet or a desktop computer or whatever the case may be. So those are all different. Um, your phone uh, is displayed in a different direction than your laptop. Um, so it adjusts to fit that. And sometimes what happens if you have a text um, on your, your banner image is that that text gets cut off and it doesn't appear the way you want it to. Um, so something like a photo or a striking graphic is really what's best in that space. Um, but we also have a gallery that you can use if you can't find something from your own image files that works well in that space. The gallery has some stock photos that you can just plug in. Um, and if you need stock photos, by the way, Unsplash is a really great free resource that you can use to find stock photos. Um, you can change the filter on your banner image, which is just like an Instagram filter. And you can also pick a theme color. Um, and that will change the color of your donate button and you'll, be, you'll see it reflected throughout your page. Um, so if your logo is, for instance, a certain shade of yellow or blue, um, you can plug the hex code for that um, color into your theme, or you can just use the color picker to find a color that you like that goes well with your logo and the images on your page. Um, the only rule here is to not make your theme color white um, because it'll basically make it so that we can't see your donate button um, and certain parts of your page because the background of the organization page is also white. Um, so you want to make sure that you pick a color that can be easily seen. <clears throat> Aside from your basic branding and your logo, your story is a really essential part of your page. Um, we have a simple text editor that you can use to add some information about your nonprofit, what you do in the world, what you're all about, what your mission is. And you can also add images, embed videos if you have a campaign video, and add formatting like lists and headers to make it more easy to read all of the information that you have in your story. Um, just a note about photos, they do need to be uploaded to either YouTube or Vimeo um, before you can upload them to, before you can embed them on your uh, your story. That's just because we don't have the capacity to also be a photo or a video sharing platform, but just upload it to YouTube or Vimeo. Make sure it's public so that, you know, we can actually pull the video in and you can just use the, the video tool there to embed that. Um, and this is very easy to use. If you can use Google Sheets or Microsoft Word, then this editor should be really easy for you to use. And there's a lot that you can do with it. Um, your story should essentially be your appeal to donors for Give 828. And we all know that people on the internet have a really short attention span. Um, most people only spend a few seconds on a page before they leave. So the more you can do to show this section some love and make it visually appealing and interesting to read, the more likely it is that people will stay on your profile and read about your nonprofit and then be compelled to complete their donation.
Uh, Mighty Cause also allows you to add media to your profile that further shows off what you're all about. You can connect your Instagram account um, to your Mighty Cause profile. So anytime you upload something to Instagram, um, it'll automatically update on Mighty Cause. And you can also optimize your social sharing settings. Um, and this is, you can do a lot with this. Um, so for instance, if on Twitter, that's where you're most active, you can set it up so that you it automatically tags you on Twitter. So if you're using a tool like TweetDeck, um, you get a notification when somebody shares uh, your, your page through your Mighty Cause page to promote you for Give828. So it gives you a lot of opportunity for interaction. So just take a second, customize that. You can also upload um, a Facebook share image. Um, they have a you know a little image container so you can optimize it so it looks good on Facebook if you're a Facebook user. Um, but there's a lot you can do here to add some additional interest to your page through all of the, the media that you make available and through connecting your social media accounts. Um, and this is something uh, when you want to customize your social sharing settings that is actually in your settings on your dashboard as well. All right, so apologies in advance. The next few slides are going to be a little bit dry because there's about they're about reports, but this is really important information, especially if this is your first time using Mighty Cause for Give 828. Um, every nonprofit on Mighty Cause has access to comprehensive donation reports, and you'll find them under reports in your dashboard. Um, when somebody makes a donation, you and all of the other admins on your page will get an email notification, and they'll be added to your donation report. So your donation report is a real-time donation feed, you can see who's giving through your donation report. Um, I do want to mention that when you go to the donation report page, there is a limited amount of space. So you'll get a summary of you know, who made the donation, how many donations you've gotten. You can, of course, adjust the report period, uh, look for certain types of donations, like if you wanted to find recurring donations. Um, but just uh, um, as a note, the donor information there is extensive and you can find it by clicking download this range. That'll export a spreadsheet so that you can get all of the details about the donation. But what you're seeing, um, in the actual page itself is a limited view and all of the robust information is going to be in the spreadsheet that you export. So just click download this range and you'll be able to get a spreadsheet that has all of the information you need. Um, you'll also find a disbursement report under reports. So if you have EFT set up, which we recommend doing, um, we'll batch together your donations and send them twice monthly on the 1st and the 15th. Um, and if you're getting checks, we send those out on the 1st. Um, you can see what's included in each disbursement um, and a breakdown of the fees for processing transactions because we like to be transparent with people using Mighty Cause. Um, and so just in that spirit, we gave um, YBGB a break on platform fees, um, 5.5%. 9% plus 30 cents is the most you'll ever be charged in fees. That includes credit card processing, which every platform has to manage, um, and that's 2.9% plus 30 cents just to process the transaction, um, and platform fees are 3%. Um, for most donations, this is not very much at all, so on a $25 donation, if the donor does not opt to cover the fees, that amounts to less than a dollar in fees. But donors do have the option to cover fees for you, and we find overwhelmingly that they are happy to do so. And in those cases, you receive the full amount of the donation because the donor absorbs that cost, they make the option, they make the decision to, and they're able to see the full amount. It's usually not very much for the average donation. Um, every platform charges fees, and it's part of how we're able to offer a secure platform to process donations on a high volume day, like give 828, um, but you'll be able to see the breakdown of fees in your disbursement report. You can also add offline gifts. Um, so if you are getting cash or checks or getting donations on other platforms, um, you can still add those to your total even if they happen off of Mighty Cause. Um, one thing I do wanna mention is that offline donations do not count toward prizes for Give 828. So for that reason, we recommend that you direct as much traffic as possible to the page on Give 828 to, and tell donors that this is where you'd like them to complete their donation um, just so that you are eligible for those prizes. Um, something cool that you can do on Mighty Cause is customize your checkout flow. Um, this is a really important part of the donation process. Um, it's when donors are choosing how much to give. So this is really helpful to customize because it's at a critical point in the donation process. Um, you can choose to collect certain pieces of data through your checkout flow. Like for instance, if collecting phone numbers is really important to your nonprofit because you like to call donors to thank them, um, you can collect their phone number in your checkout flow. Um, you can also 
use custom donation suggestions and descriptions to tie those amounts into your campaign. So for instance, if you're celebrating uh, your fifth year anniversary at your nonprofit since you were founded, and you're running a campaign based on that, and the number five is meaningful, you can make suggested donation amounts increase in increments of five. So, you know, $50, $100, and so on. Um, or if you're running a nonprofit that, for instance, is focused on helping girls learn how to write code, you could break down some of the costs involved in that kind of work and make one of your donation levels the amount that helps provide coding classes for one girl or provides a full semester of coding education or allows you to provide a laptop or whatever that cost is. Um, now these work best if you tie them to a real world service or item that you provide because people like donating things rather than money. Um, so it's kind of like a shopping cart experience uh, tying dollar amounts to things that you provide gives them a more meaningful experience. They get to feel like instead of just giving $25, I'm giving this specific thing to somebody that this nonprofit serves. Um, you can also preview your checkout flow, which I definitely recommend doing um, just to make sure it's not too long. Um, sometimes when we're going through and we're choosing options, we can choose a lot of data that we want to collect, but then we go through the checkout process and realize, oh, this makes it really long. So it can help you edit yourself to ensure that that process is really easy and quick for donors. Um, and one thing I do want to point out, it's um, on your to-do list, but you can also create a thank you page through the checkout flow page. Um, and this is a page that displays once somebody creates their or completes their donation. Um, it just thanks them for their support. You can customize it. You can add a video if you wanted to do a thank you video. Um, you can add a CTA button if you'd like them to go somewhere else. Um, and it just makes the process of thanking donors automatic. Um, they will also automatically get a receipt that has a, a, a custom message, message from you that you can also input under um, post checkout, under checkout flow. Um, and those are really important because thanking donors is extremely statistically important in whether or not those donors will come back and make a second donation. So it's really important to thank them quickly. And your thank you page and your custom thank you message that's embedded into the receipt that they get automates that process for you and also ensures that they get a timely thank you from your nonprofit. Um, one thing we'll talk a lot about in the next webinar is matching grants. Um, but I just wanted to mention that we have a tool um, to add matching grants through Mighty Cause. And this is one of the most powerful ways that you can boost your campaign. Um, a matching grant is basically just a large donation that your nonprofit secures before the event. And you use that donation to offer donors the opportunity to have their donation matched, kind of like a BOGO sale. Um, our tool lets you enter in your matching grant and we total it up for you so you can really just once you get the grant money you can set it and forget it you don't have to do any math on the grant it's totally automated for you you just tell us how much your grant is for when you want to make it available and how you would like it to work um, and just as a note if you've never had a matching grant before um, the first place to look for a matching grant is your board of directors um, your board has a fiduciary responsibility to your organization and fundraising is part of the board's responsibility to the nonprofit so getting your board number members to say provide a joint matching grant can be a really great way to kickstart your campaign uh, because donors really love matching grants. Um, organizations that do really well on giving days almost always have a matching grant secured. Um, so this is an important piece to think about as you're planning your campaign. Um, so very quickly, um, I wanted to go through your settings. On your settings pages, you can add and remove admins. So if someone joins your team or leaves, you can manage who has access to your page there. Um, you can have 10 admins. So don't be shy about adding volunteers who might want to help with your campaign. Um, you can always remove them once the campaign is over. Um, you can manage your legal info. So for instance, if your address has changed or uh, we import your information from the IRS database, if that is not accurate, you can update it through your settings page. Um, and you can also set up EFT, which is our direct deposit, deposit option for disbursements, which we highly recommend doing because checks can get lost in the mail. Unfortunately, it happens. It can take a little while for you to get the money. Direct deposit, you get that money in your account on the 1st and the 15th. Um, so it's, it's really easy to uh, get your your money faster so that you can start putting it back into your nonprofit. And finally, under your general settings, you can optimize your social sharing options like we talked about earlier, and just make sure that your uh, profile is optimized and shared on to be shared on social media. 
Okay, so the last technical slide. Um, I do want to make you aware that we have a donation widget that's free for everybody to use. Um, what a donation widget is, it's, it's basically a little iframe in bed um, that you can put on your website that allows people to make donations to your Mighty Cause page for that will count for Give 828. Um, so you go to your organization profile, there's a little button that you can see a screenshot of that says share, um, and then you go to embed options, um, and you just copy the code for the iframe and then embed that on your website wherever you would like it. Um, it's a really cool little tool. Um, it pulls in all of your, your theme colors. Um, people can make recurring donations through the widget, um, and it, uh, you, it pulls in your custom donation amounts and your descriptions. Um, so it's a really great alternative to something like a PayPal button, um, which you know takes them to the PayPal site, and you don't have as much control over that process. This gives you a little bit more control, um, and it allows those donations to count toward prizes for Give 828. Um, especially if you don't have a donation widget or a button currently embedded on your site, um, this can be a really great option for you. It's a really great way to upgrade, say, a PayPal donate button because um, it's just live on your site. And even if your site is not secure, because what an iframe does is just pull in part of another website basically um, even if your website is not secure this donation pro this donation process is secure because it's on mighty cause and we are a secure site um, so you know take care of it to notice the date donation widget embedded on your website um, especially if you're like well i have another widget on my website and that doesn't count and i really want to make sure that i get all of the donations that normally come in through our website and have them count toward give 828 this is a really great option for you all right, so we are in the home stretch, and before we do the Q&A, I just wanted to go into some campaign strategy. Um, as I've mentioned before, we'll have a full webinar on campaign strategy coming up that is much more in depth. So if this is something you'd like to learn more about, um, please make sure to sign up for that um, webinar on the trainings page on the Give 828 site. All right, so um, as part of your strategy, we really recommend using the really great toolkit that Young Black and Giving Back Institute has put together. Um, it has step-by-step -step instructions, templates, tips, and it'll help you get a feel for how to run your campaign and all sorts of info that you can use to get ready for the big day. Um, this is created by them for you, so definitely check it out and download it if you haven't already done so. Um, as I mentioned before, we're doing a strategy webinar that's gonna be more of a deep dive into building your campaign strategy that's coming up and I recommend uh, signing up for that if you're able to um, and also if you're looking for some basic information about the event if you're like oh gosh what are the fees I forgot you can go to the FAQs on the site to get familiar with um, some of the nitty-gritty details about the event so make sure that you check out the FAQs um, sometimes it's easy to send a donor who has a question to the FAQs as well so those are available to you make sure you give them a look before um, the 28th Right. As I mentioned earlier in the webinar, donations officially open on August 14th so that you have some time to build momentum for your campaign and get some seed donations. Um, these donations made from the 14th on count toward your Give 828 total and they can help you win leaderboard prizes. Um, these are not pledges. These are in donations that process immediately. Um, so it's important to understand that because sometimes donors can get a little bit confused and they think they're pledging to have a donation that processes on the 28th, but it's actually just a real-time donation that processes as they make it. Um, and they'll show up in your donations report. You'll get a notification. They're normal donations, but they do count toward the giving event. Um, and do, donors do not need to set up an account to donate, which is a question I always get. They can certainly set up an account if they're setting up a recurring donation. It's recommended that they set up an account so that they can manage their recurring donation, um, but they are not forced to by Mighty Cause. Um, an important thing to know about online fundraising is that people are more likely to donate when they see that you already have some donations um, and they're actually the most likely to donate when you're really close to your goal amount which seems paradoxical um, but it's really just how donors operate no one likes to be first um, so this period of early giving is a really great time to reach out to your inner circle um, people like your board of directors your staff your volunteers any tried and true donors that you know you can count on to support you um, a lot of nonprofits worry with early giving will this cut into my donations on 
the big day? Um, and overall, the answer is no, um, because the result that we see is usually that people tend to donate more than once if they give early. Um, so they'll donate when you ask for early giving, and they'll also be responsive to your requests to give on the 28th so that they'll give on that day as well. So what happens is instead of some person, what somebody making one donation, they end up making two, um, and it actually helps you raise more overall. It gives you multiple touch points with each donor. Um, one of the capabilities that Mighty Cause offers is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, which is just when a supporter uh, creates a fundraiser on behalf of your organization. It's very simple and easy for them to do. It's sort of baked into the structure of Mighty Cause, and we even allow you to create a template for them that you can um, build that pre-fills certain parts of their page. So that's something that you can access through your dashboard. You can set up a, a, a template for them so that if they opt to use it, you can preload some things into their page that makes it easier for them to get up and publish and start raising money. Um, people like volunteers, staff members, board members, um, and your tried and true supporters, that inner circle, are great people to ask to be an ambassador for you on Give 828. And you'll want to start asking soon because the, the date is creeping up. I'm always surprised at how, quick, how quickly it's coming up. Um, and so it's important to start planting that seed and getting their agreement now. Um, and the benefits of peer-to-peer -peer for an organization on a giving event are huge. Um, as a nonprofit, you don't typically have access to your donors family and friends to ask for donations, but they do. Um, so it can help get your campaign in front of more people that you wouldn't otherwise be able to ask for donations. Um, and studies show that the one of the reasons people are most likely to make that first donation to an organization is when a family member or a friend asks them to. So this is a really powerful way to get your campaign rolling. Um, it also allows your, your biggest supporters to tell their story about why they care about your cause and get involved, which people are really looking to do, especially now. Um, so now is a really great time to start thinking about how you can incorporate peer-to-peer -peer into your fundraising strategy for the 28th. Um, and giving days in general are very much about spreading the word on social media, and that's going to be even more important during these times when coronavirus is preventing us from gathering in person. Um, so make social media a big part of your strategy. Let people know that you're participating now, even though we're not open for donations yet. You can say, hey, we're participating in this great event. Here's what it's all about. Save the date. Um, and you also want to make email a big part of your donations or your, your campaign strategy as well, because that is a direct line to your supporters. Um, social media tends to use algorithms, so even though you post something on the 28th, they might not see it until August 30th when the event is over and then their donation doesn't count. But email, they'll just you'll just go straight to their inbox. So it's really important to think about you know email strategy as well. We're going to go in depth on this on the strategy webinar. Um, but include it in your newsletter. If you send an e-newsletter out, just have them save the date, let them know you're participating in this event. Um, we recommend segmenting communications by donor group. So for instance, those inner circle donors, you might want to contact a little bit more and talk to them a little bit differently than you would somebody who made one donation and you haven't heard from them since. Um, so you can sort of create segments within most email marketing programs where you can change up your messaging just a little bit to get them interested in the day in a way that makes sense for them and acknowledges the relationship that you have with that donor. Um, I do recommend highly planning and scheduling as much as you can in advance. Save yourself some, some time and some effort. Get some social media posts planned and in the hopper um, so that you don't have to worry as much about live posting on the day of unless you want to celebrate a milestone or a goal. And you'll also have some time to put together image assets, edit together a video, do, do things along those lines that you can share to promote your campaign. Um, and then what I also want to just make sure it's obvious to most of us, but make sure that you have a clear call to action, like donate now, give now, donate today, um, in, in all of your social media posts and in your email, and provide a link. Um, I'm always surprised at how often nonprofits for, forget to provide a link to their page. You're just going to be using the URL for your organization's profile. So when you're on your profile, you can copy and paste that link and put it into your email or put it on social media and that is where you want to send people, um, but just make sure that in all of your communications you are providing a link and directing them to the site where you would like to make them, have them make the donation. Donors left on to their own devices, sometimes they'll just 
make it wherever they can find. They'll make it through Facebook. They'll make it through your website. Or often if they don't have clear directions, they will just not make a donation. So that's also a really important part. And it's just the URL to your organization profile. Um, I did want to mention that we offer support. Um, we have a full team that's here to support you as you get ready for the day. Um, we have a library of walkthroughs and technical information and FAQs at support.mightycause.com. Um, and you can also email us at support at mightycause.com. We're Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 on Eastern time. There's also a phone number you can use to reach us. Um, I'm also happy to help you. Sometimes I can be a little bit slow to respond. I'm not in support. Um, so sometimes you'll get a much quicker response if you actually reach out to our support team. I just wanted to let you know that that's available. And we also can help your donors. So if your donor has a question about their donation, if they, you know, their credit card was charged once or twice, often they'll see a pending charge and go, oh, I was charged twice. Our support team can get that straightened out for them. If they missed their receipt, sometimes it goes to people's spam folders, and I've even seen people make typos in their email addresses. We can make sure they get their receipt so that you don't have to worry about it. So make sure that you leverage our support that we offer to you. We have full support available um, and waiting on the 28th. So if you have a question or a problem that needs an urgent answer, our team is going to be there on the 28th, and we're also there to support you leading up to the event. All right, so I just wanted to make some time for questions. Um, we might already have some in there, so if you have something you would like to ask, uh, just feel free to pop it in the um, questions box of your GoToWebinar panel. Um, oh, and it looks like somebody is asking about the thank you page. Um, I finished setting up the thank you page, but it's not checked off on the overview of the setup list. Is there any reason it may not be complete? Um, just double check and make sure that it's saved. That's uh, the most common reason it should autosave, um, but that's most common, commonly the reason. Um, you can also just try refreshing if you're still not seeing it um, marked off on your 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 to-do list, contact support at mightycause.com in case there is some sort of uh, weird situation happening on our end, we can help, help you straighten that out. Um, but we, they can help you with that process and make sure that if you did it, it's actually checked off on your to-do list. Um, I just wanted to uh, re-emphasize that we are recording this right now and everybody will have access to the slides and recording. So if you missed part of it or you wanted to share it with a staff member, you will have access on the Give 828 page and I'll probably also just send out an email so you have um, access to it and you know get pinged about it being added to the trainings page. Um, will the full amount of the recurring donation be counted towards the goal? Um, that's a great question. So if you have a recurring donation set up on Mighty Cause, like last year, if you participated in Giving Black Day and somebody set up like a, a $20 monthly donation to your nonprofit. Um, yes, if that donation processes within the window um, that the donations are open. So, so from August 14th through August 28th, it will count towards your giving, uh, your give 828 totals. Um, it won't count for the full amount. So if somebody gives, you know, $10 each month and that accounts for $120 over the course of the year, they get credit for the $10 that were made within that window of time. Um, so the full annual amount of the recurring donation does not count toward your goal, um, but they do get credit if they, like, if you have a recurring donation that's been processing since last year um, and it processes from the 14th to the 28th that you will get you will get credit for that so i think i understood that one correctly but if you have any other questions about recurring donations and how they count toward the event please let me know if i if i misunderstood that question all right how do I find and download the toolkit? Um, so go to give828.org. Um, under resources, you, you'll find a little, there's a drop down. So click the drop down and then just choose nonprofit toolkit. Um, and then you just click to download it. It's a PDF. Um, so you can download it there. Um, so the easiest way to get there is from give828.org, go to resources, drop down menu, and then nonprofit toolkit. And there's some other great resources in there as well. So be sure to check that out. Um, but that's the easiest way to get a hold of the toolkit. Oh, this is a great question. Uh, my donation amount is still displayed from last year's event. How do I reset it to zero? Um, we actually have a walkthrough of that in our support library. Um, but basically, you would just want to go toward your goal. 
and you can tell you can enter on your profile there's a little pencil next to your goal and you can enter the uh, date that you want it to start counting so it's probably counting from when we opened donations last year when you reset that date to um, August 14th, 2020, it'll reset to zero. So you don't lose that donation information, but it changes the display and what's counting. So um, when you go to your organization profile and you see where your your metrics are, you have the, the progress bar and you have um, the actual count, um, you can edit it in both of those places so that you change it to August 14th, 2020, and that will reset it to zero. Um, and if that didn't make sense or you're more of a visual person and you want to see how that looks, um, go to support.mightycause.com um, and under nonprofit articles or nonprofit support, you'll be able to find a, a walkthrough of that whole process with screenshots if what I said didn't make any sense. But just go to your profile, click the pencils next to anything you want to edit and change the date. All right. Uh, what is a featured campaign? That's a great question. So a featured campaign is something, it's a page that is connected to your organization's profile. Um, it could be <clears throat> if you wanted to create a separate fundraising page for your Give 828 um, campaign. It could also be a peer-to-peer -peer campaign, but you have some areas where if somebody ends up on your page and you have all these other campaigns going on, you have a special Give 828 campaign page and you have a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser that one of your board members started, you can just put those links there and they will display on your profile page. So they're just kind of quick links. Um, a lot of nonprofits I've seen use them as sort of greatest hits. So we have this really amazing fundraiser that raised lots of money. Here's a link to it um, just to show our success and show our impact. So you can use it in those ways on giving days. Typically, um, you'll want to uh, include any campaign campaigns that you want to show off or redirect people to if they go to your org page. Um, so yeah, th there's a couple of different uses for that, but whatever pages you want that are connected to your organization's page that you want to show off and make accessible from your profile, um, you can just add them there and it'll create a nice little section where you can showcase those, those campaigns. Um, so I hope that made sense, but it's basically for peer-to-peer uh, -peer pages or um, additional campaign pages that you have set up that are connected to your profile. All right, so what is a common goal amount for Give828? That's a really fantastic question. Um, so it varies. Every nonprofit has their own capacity, especially now nonprofits are kind of having to readjust what they um, expect from donors. Um, a good guidepost is the last time you ran an organized fundraising campaign, what did you raise? Um, you know, if you raised a thousand dollars the last time you ran a campaign, like if you participated in Giving Tuesday or you ran an end of year capital campaign, um, that is a good guidepost for how much you you want to make your goal for. You want to make sure that it's achievable for you. Um, there's really no average goal amount, and a lot of nonprofits will have non-monetary goals. So, like, let's say last campaign you ran, you raised about $1,000. Why not make that your goal this time $1,200 to raise $1,200 for your nonprofit for Give 828 if that seems within the window of like what you normally raise for a campaign because you know your donor base, you know what they usually tend to give. So it's really personal to what your nonprofit does and how your donor base tends to give. Um, just look back and see what you did last campaign as a guidepost. If you're really not sure, you know, you can, you don't have to have a progress bar on your page. You can make your goal, you know, we want to pick up some more donors and you can keep it open. You can make it non-monetary. Um, you can also just sort of start with a smaller goal. Let's say, you know, I'm a small nonprofit and I have a really small donor base. I would love to raise $500 for my nonprofit. If you hit that goal, you can change it. So you're not locked into that goal. You can start with a smaller achievable goal. And then if you hit it, you can make stretch goals. You can just edit it real time. You can say, hey, we hit our goal. We're going to raise it. You can also adjust it if you're you're like you set an, an ambitious goal and you didn't quite, it doesn't look like you're making it there. You can readjust. So you don't have to use the progress bar. Um, I would say for a, you know, a smaller nonprofit, raising $1,000 to $2,000 is a really good goal, um, but it depends on your size and capacity and how much effort and staff and marketing you have to devote to this. Um, so really, you know, sit down with your team and, and take a look at what you raise 
used in the past for you know past campaigns um, what your capacity is right now a lot of nonprofits are kind of hobbled by the current economic situation um, and a lot of nonprofits are doing really well they're doing better than ever we had um, a couple of nonprofits who were small bail funds in Minnesota sort of like they quadruple their size overnight. They went from being small organizations to multi-million dollars overnight. So it's really hard to say, but take a look at your capacity, what your donors tend to give and make a, a judgment call about what your goal is, but just know that you're not locked into it. And it's totally fine if this is your first year to sort of see what you can do and then use that as a, as, as a goal post next year. Um, so it's really open, but you're not locked into a goal. Let's see. As a nonprofit consultant, is there any way to any other way to help clients other than functioning as an ambassador and encouraging them to participate? Um, so yeah, I mean, if you have a nonprofit that you want to help in your nonprofit consultant, um, a lot of nonprofits, it, it depends on the relationship. So you can always reach out to me offline if you wanted to get into the weeds here. Um, being a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser is a really great way to help, um, you know, that's pretty much the most meaningful thing that you can do for them. But also a lot of nonprofits really need help with social media management. They need help with thanking donors, the sending the emails and calling people on the phone. So uh, organizing in that capacity, getting more, uh, more people power, more people on board to help with those campaign elements is a really meaningful way to help nonprofits, um, especially non small nonprofits. That's kind of what we do at Mighty Cause. We are a small nonprofit based. So more of those functions that smaller nonprofits with limited staff have a harder time managing on their own. If you have expertise in social media, if you have expertise in email marketing, those are all really amazing things to um, offer to a nonprofit if you would like to help them during Give 828. Um, and also a really easy thing that anybody can do without starting a fundraiser is just share their campaign. You know, it doesn't cost any money to go on Instagram and say, hey, donate to this organization. They do really great work. Um, so there's a lot of really great ways to get involved. Um, but I find that where nonprofits kind of struggle the most, um, because it's a luxury to have a dedicated marketing person or a communications per person is helping them um, with social media, helping them with email, um, and also just helping them with campaign strategy. Um, fundraising, as you know, is a very specialized field and a lot of people at nonprofits wear a lot of hats. Um, so they may not be able to have a full development staff available to help them with fundraising um, and how to plan a campaign. So those are ways that a nonprofit consultant could be a huge asset to nonprofits during a giving day like Give 828. All right. Um, so I think that's all we have in terms of questions. Those were all really fantastic questions. Um, and just to reiterate, this recording will be available on the Give 828 website, and I will make sure to send you all an email um, that has a link to the recording and the slides where you can download them if you have somebody else who wasn't able to make it today or you just wanted to, to keep them on hand. So that will be added as soon as I'm able to upload it to YouTube and upload it to the, the site. Um, thank you all so much. Um, I'm really excited for this year's event and have excited to see what you're able to achieve. Um, my name again is Linda. You can contact me at lynda at mightycause.com. And don't be shy about reaching out to support if you have a question about your page. Our support staff is able to help you very quickly. Um, they are support at mightycause.com. Um, so thank you guys so much and have a great rest of your day.